Hi, welcome to Pico Family Jam. So this is our family art making program that we do on the second Sunday of every month from 12 to 4 and it's free for anybody that wants to come and so we hope you will join us. Um, so this month we're inspired by the current exhibit we have up and as you can see this is part of the exhibit. This is beautiful, these beautiful heads created by George Rodriguez. The exhibition is called In Unison, the Ceramic Sculptures of George Rodriguez. And it is inspired by the Chinese zodiac, but he has chosen animals from Mexico um, to, to make these huge clay animal heads. And then he has collaborated with other artists in sort of decorating them. And he's gonna actually be coming to join us this month, which is really, really exciting. And he will teach you how to make a small animal head that you can take home um, that is air dried clay. So you don't have to have a kiln to bring it home right after you make it. And we're going to have George Rodriguez join us in just a second. Welcome, everybody. Uh, my name is George Rodriguez, and this is my show in unison. And I'm going to show you how to make a small animal head, very similar to the larger heads that are uh, behind me and in the exhibition of in unison. So. I work primarily in clay and all the sculptures here are made out of clay. Um, so we're gonna be doing something similar, but it's a slightly different type of clay. So we're gonna be using air dry clay. The clay that I normally use is kiln fired clay. So it's uh, wet uh, water-based clay and it has to go into a kiln, but today to make it a little bit easier so that you can take your beautiful creations home, we're gonna uh, use an air dry clay that just hardens when you just leave it out. So. I prepped one little head um, to kind of show you. Um, so it's a miniature scale of what I have mounted on the wall, but this we can put a nice nail behind it and you can make whatever animal it is you want to uh, hang on the wall. So you have a little, you know, little wall mounted creation of your own. So we have this wonderful block of clay, it usually comes in a bigger bag, but I just took a small chunk and we're gonna use our wire tool to give you a piece of this clay and I'll just cut a small piece off <clears throat> and we're going to start very simply the best tools that we have are our hands so we're going to use those a lot to model and make our forms so first thing that I want to do is I'm going to make a small pinch pot and a pinch pot is basically just a little bowl and you're using your hands and right now I'm kind of like moving the clay around to make it into a ball shape and then I'm gonna take my thumbs, I'm gonna push in the middle, and I'm gonna to start to create a bowl. So as I'm pushing, I'm also turning so that I can get a nice dip in there. And the bowl shape makes a hollow form to make the basis or to make the, the main uh, shape of what our, our wall head is going to be. So I made a kind of a little cat, jaguar-esque type of um, head. So. Just to change it up a little bit, I'm going to make, um, I don't know, a bird. Let's go with an eagle. Okay, so I'm just pinching, pinching, pinching. And as I'm pinching, I'm also feeling the thickness. If it's really thick on one part, I squeeze a little more um, so that it is more even. So you can see it's starting to get really smooth on the inside. Okay, so now I have a little bowl, right? <clears throat> so if we turn that on its side, then that could be the shape of our head. Okay, so I have a little bowl here. And then if we want this to hang on a wall and we want it to be nice and strong, what we wanna do is make a, uh, a coil to reinforce the back. So we're gonna take a little chunk of clay. I'm gonna roll it between my hands and just make a long coil. You can also use a table and you can roll it on the table to make it longer and smoother. So I'm just kind of rolling, rolling, rolling to make a nice coil. And whenever you're working with clay, um, whether it's um, this air dry clay or water-based clay, we wanna do what's called scoring in clay. And scoring just helps things kind of bind together a little bit more. So I'm gonna take a fork and I'm gonna scratch the surface. So scoring is basically like scratching. And I'm gonna scratch the surface and I'll scratch the surface of my coil. 
And basically what I'm doing is I'm getting the clay to like interlock so that it holds really tight together. Okay, so then I can place my coil around my edge. And then the next thing that I wanna do is I wanna blend together to make sure that it's nice and strong and nice and connected. So I'm bending on the, uh, I'm blending on the outside, but I also wanna make sure that I blend on the inside, right? So this is hard to see on the video probably, but I'm sco like scooping in and making sure that the inside is nice and smooth. Okay. So we are, you know, have kind of a ball shape. You can put any type of face that you want on this. Um, if it is a human face, right, you could just start to add nose, mouth, um, ears, eyes, all of that. Um, if it's an animal face, you add exactly the same thing, but they're just slightly different shapes. So we said we we're gonna make um, an eagle. <clears throat> so an eagle, one of the biggest things is the beak, right? So we have a, a longer beak sticking out. So I'll grab a little bit more clay and I'm gonna make another pinch pot, but this time I'm gonna make it um, taller. So I'll take a ball, pinch it, and again, I'm turning it. All right. So if I were to add this on top, this is closer to this Jaguar that I made, right? So that's kind of how I would make this Jaguar. But we're making an eagle, which means it's gonna be a little bit more pointy. So I can start to squeeze it between my fingers and make it a little bit more pointy. And then if I have um, extra clay, I can always just cut that extra off, remove it and fold it. The clay is very forgiving, so you can really just use your fingers and it's, you know, it's all about touch and how, how much you, um, you know, what, what you can do with your hands. So this looks more like a, you know, like a nose, which is gonna be very beak-like. So <clears throat> if I stick this on now, you know, it's not quite the right shape, so I can cut a little bit more clay off of it. Um, I'll use this pointy side to cut. So we'll cut a little bit of clay off there, a little bit of clay off of there. And now it fits a little bit better as my beak on the eagle, okay? <clears throat> so remember what I said earlier, whenever we connect two pieces of clay, it's always best to score, right? So I marked where my scoring lines go. Now I'm gonna scratch up this surface. I'm gonna scratch up this surface. and then I'll bring it together. And in that little container, it's just water. Water helps make things a little bit softer and you'll notice I'm not using a lot of water because then things get very slippery and hard to hold, but just a little bit of water to help um, blend easier. So I can blend, blend, blend. And you might be thinking, that eagle does not look like an eagle. I'm like, what is this? And that's okay. We're um, just getting the, ba the, the main form and then we're gonna be adding all the detail after. Okay, so I have a beak. <clears throat> now what I wanna do is um, I can smooth it by using my fingers, right? I can also, also smooth it by using what's called a rib, which is this tool and you can just kinda go along the surface and get some of that a little bit more smooth. I'm gonna use my fingers because they're faster and really good tools. Okay. Smooth, smooth, smooth. Okay. And then, <clears throat> you know, this doesn't look like a beak right now. So a beak has a top part of the beak and the bottom part. So I'm just gonna draw one line with this edge. We also have wooden knives that allow you to draw that line. So let's just push in a little bit. Now if I push in, I make that line and it separates the top and the bottom of the beak. Okay, let's do it again on the other side. So now I have, you know, a nicer looking beak. And then I'm just gonna use my hands to help model 
and bring a little bit of detail. This eagle looks like it's smiling, which is a nice thing. Okay. Next thing that I want to do for this is maybe add some eyes, right? So the eyes are going to go along the sides here. So first thing that I'm doing is like pushing from the inside a little bit. And you can see the little space popping out where the eye is going to go. That gives it a, a brow. And you can be as creative. It doesn't have to look like a real animal. It can look like a, you know, animal from your imagination or um, it could be anatomically correct whatever you decide, because you're the artist and you get to make it. Okay, so I push the eyes out a little bit, <clears throat> and then I'm gonna use a nice rounded tool to now push back in, so that I have a brow, but I don't have an eyeball yet, so now I just have an eye socket, right? So let's do it on the other side. This helps make it look a little bit more realistic. All right, so we have a eye socket. And then the best thing to do is to just roll a small ball and see if it's gonna fit as an eyeball. Is that too big? Yes. Let's make it a little smaller. Okay, so we'll take a little bit more clay off, roll it into a smaller ball. And again, same rule. We're sticking something together. We wanna score. And then we're gonna stick that right on there so it looks like a nice eyeball all right and we have another ball of clay let's do the same thing on the other side and we'll stick that right on there okay so it's looking a little bit closer to an eagle great it's not you know done yet um, but now that we have the main form comes the fun part which is you can do all the texture right so the beak is a little bit smoother there's a lot of feathers, so you can start to play and um, add feather texture with all of your tools. So um, one thing that I like to do is use this round edge and I can just push into the clay and it starts to make a lot of texture. So I'll do a little bit of texture over the top here. So hopefully it can look like, like feathers. Okay, so now I have a little bit more texture there. <clears throat> Let's say um, I really like to draw, so instead of adding the texture, I'm gonna draw the texture on, right? So I can smooth that part so that I don't have a lot of um, funky uh, clay to draw around, but if I smooth it out, then I can draw my feathers and maybe my feathers look like. Like that, All right? So there's different ways to add the texture. Um, one is drawn, one is by pushing in. And if you see all these little burrs, just, you know, you can clean them off later. If you clean them off now, you're just gonna push them right back into the clay but we can add a little texture that way. All right, so different textures in the top. <clears throat> Another great thing is we have uh, these uh, impression tools. So this is just a doily, right? But the clay takes your fingerprints, it takes the pressing of a tool. It can also take the texture of fabric like this. So if I go to the side and I lay my fabric and I push it in, Right, when you push it in as hard as you can without changing the shape of your little head, then you peel it back and then you get a really nice texture on the surface, right? So we have three different ways of making texture. Um, and then the last way would be, you know, if I wanted the feathers to look more 3D, I could just take a little bit of clay and I can start to add clay to the surface. And I remember what I said about scoring, um, I didn't, apparently, because I'm adding clay without scoring. So I want to score first to make sure the clay has somewhere to hold on to as I'm making little pieces and then attaching them to the top. 
And you know, it all depends on what your uh, aesthetic is, what you like to see, um, what your level of patience, like all of this plays into a different look for these forms. And this um, eagle kind of looks like a raven, um, but you know, it's a bird and I'm okay with that. Um, and this one also has four different textures. So if you really wanted to, like you would pick one and then you do that over the whole thing and it starts to look a little bit more uh, complete as one finished sculpture. Um, okay, the last thing that I wanna do is I'm going to just fix my beak you know, there's no real definition of like where my uh, feathers start and where my beak starts. So what I want to do is I'm just going to draw a line to say like, oh, this is part of the beak. All right, my beak starts right where that line is. You can kind of see it a little bit better. And then my feathers start beyond that and I can smooth my beak out, you can draw on that, you know, again, be as creative as possible. So here we go. We have a nice weird looking uh, eagle sculpture. Uh, but you can make a jaguar, you can make a bull, you can make whatever it is you want. You can make your pet. So, um, great. Thanks everybody. <laughs>